All right. Hi, everybody. It's Bob in one KPR, and here we are with another receiver. Uh, this one is a, an SDR of sorts, and uh, it's based on uh, what a lot of people are familiar with from way back in the day when it's first started, which is the old uh, PCR 1000 uh, from Icon. This was out on a loaner for a while, and uh, it was actually used by a guy that was doing some roving uh, sight measurements. And I put in a, uh, aside from the power switch, I put in a, uh, a power supply or generator switch. That shows him that he has emergency power all the time. Even when this unit's off, uh, he'll be getting a light uh, to show him that there's power available. Uh, but I reclaimed the radio. I got it back. He's done with it. And we did some work here to put it into uh, what I'm going to call an EMP-proof uh, enclosure. If the big one goes off, uh, <laughs> hopefully this, uh, this thing will survive. There's a lot of very sensitive FET and IC-type components in there. So uh, EMP shielding and RFI shielding and all that stuff is very, very important. All right, let's go to this quickly. As you can see, it's a 1U rack mounted unit it's all steel uh, it will have a steel top there's going to be some copper uh, uh, closed loop copper shielding around certain parts of the uh, radio particularly anything that's going to try to get into the uh, uh, the RF port or any of the feed lines well it started in the back uh, we've got an HF port an SO239 I got a BNC and an F fitting uh, an F-59 for uh, UHF and VHF. Uh, right now I'm using clip leads as an antenna. I'm below ground in the basement, so reception is barely. <laughs> uh, and we're connected out here to uh, our 160 long wire for the HF. Uh, because this thing is a serial port driven... Uh, a to D and D to A device. Uh, I had to put together a little breakout board, and we so that we could drive a, uh, a USB to uh, serial converter, which happens here. We break out again, and then we go back here so that we have a USB input, uh, a Type C USB, which is uh, you find a lot lately on some bigger equipment, larger cameras, and so on. Uh, a mini and a micro USB like you'd find on your cell phone. Uh, again, we had to provide a lot of shielding uh, and RFI elimination because data corruption, when you're doing all this monkey business here, uh, this, this whole S-shaped loop uh, has really got to be protected to keep the little, little bits and bytes uh, behaving themselves. Uh, up front where we did the breakout, uh, as you can see, we have the status of all the serial uh, components. Um, right now you see the, uh, the received data flashing away in the on, you know, the ones or the zero on state. Uh, and you know what, let me just, let's go over here. We're running the PCR program on the computer. Let me just stop the radio for a minute. I notice now that we've stagnated, all these guys are off. This greenie here is, is uh, clear to send, but nobody's sending. Over here we have status indication that we have serial uh, communication and uh, USB communication at the top. I don't know if we could, you could see that. Uh, we also monitor the uh, A to D and D to A audio lines, so we have an activity light. Uh, we have a drive light that actually uh, integrates everything to about one second, one and a half seconds, so we know that the uh, the comms from all the uh, uh, D to A is actually active. Uh, I'll explain why we do that with lights, idiot lights. And then finally, the uh, data line status. This is a three-second integration. Now, the reason we do that 
is that because if you're using this for a broadcast monitor in a studio, you want to be able, you're not going to be listening to it with the power, with the power amp running, listening to the actual, actual audio. You want to be able to walk by this thing and see that you got a lot of green here. And as I've said in some of my other uh, uh, videos, green is good, red is bad. If you drive a car, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the same here. All right, so let's turn, let's go back here, turn this on. And it's, there we go. And we have a local, I'm trying to get a good angle here. Uh, the local station doing about plus 20. Let me, let me show you that, uh, Here's the RF gain control that wants to talk to the computer. And hopefully it does. Oh, watch. I'm going to bring that down slowly, slowly. So you see that has an effect, too. And if you're out in the field doing uh, voltage per meter or field strike tests, this will come in very handy because you can calibrate it right at the transmitter site or whatever and uh, have a good idea of what you're doing based on the numbers here. And speaking of that, this is all set up so that back here at the antenna, 50 microvolts, which would be S9 for a ham, but 50 microvolts here coming in uh, with the RF gain at full uh, will give us in the audio conversion from the D to A, if we could see the numbers there, you see 0 dB. Uh, 0 dB average, which is 0 0.77 volts into a 600 ohm line. And of course, that, that's adjustable with the line level control here. But it is calibrated, so the 50 microvolts in, with everything set correctly, will give you uh, 0 dB on the line. I set it, because this is instantaneous, I set it so that uh, the 0 dB light uh, that indicator is on fairly solid, and we get some flashing into the red. If there's more than 50% overload, all the greens will blank out. Now watch. Here we go. As you can see, you see what happened now. That's serious overload. Just measuring the peaks, and they don't blank out. All right, right next to it, average modulation. It's a three-second integration to tell you how much energy is in the carrier. If you're an AM guy, you're going to want to know that. Or you might want to know that. So, uh, uh, it, you know, talk. this is talk radio right now, so you're not going to see a completely full envelope. But there, there's that. We have monitor gain. It's a little power amp. Line level, we talked about that. Uh, for listening pleasure. Uh, bandpass filters, which are uh, low and high. Here's a little close-up of everything that's going on. Uh, all right, so let's play this. I'm going to shut off this other radio. And I'll crank this up. Here's the external speaker. Let's go to that. Uh, whoops. You go to the uh, external speaker. Let me reset the computer. Like Pasca. I don't, you know, so, I have no idea about whether... But, there's a talk show so, in progress right there. So you can monitor whenever you want to. Normally you wouldn't have audio coming out of this thing. If you don't have an external speaker, you just go over to the internal. Here's audio send. You could use a uh, digital recorder and do proof of play. You could do a lot of things with that. Do the recording. Uh, something to bring back to the studio so everybody could hear what you sound like at the fringes of everything. Uh, all right, let's go inside quickly. Uh, here's all the breakout circuitry for the serial. Uh, the serial guy here. We're just bringing everything over on a ribbon cable. Uh, that's high-level digital, so I'm not really worried. It's averaging plus and minus 12, 14 volts in, in serial format. Uh, we're doing tone compensation. A little 386 power amp. Here's all the A to D 
indeed a, a uh, audio conversion to drive these logic level uh, indicators here. Idiot lights, you gotta love them, right? A very, very, very clean power supply. Uh, two or three millivolts of ripple or hash on that supply. That thing's clean. And that's warm, but it's not hot. Auxiliary power in or out, 12 volts to drive your laptop or your, uh, I don't know, you know, charge up your tablet, whatever. Or you could feed this out in the field from a 12 volt battery or generator or something. Of course, 110, careful with your fingers. Speaker output, external speaker, line output for your DAC or line feed back to the studio. We talked about all the, the four types of USB things. And I don't know if I mentioned the uh, input filtering. Because of all the delicate solid state stuff in here, uh, these are all cap fed uh, HF, VHF, UHF. And we keep DC static buildup on the antenna. Uh, keep that out of the radio. Also, nearby strikes. You've got a flashover, uh, flashover tube here. I may add some MOVs. Or uh, some kind of diode protection there, too, as well. Uh, so, that pretty much uh, lets me sleep at night knowing that a nearby strike isn't going to hurt anything. And why build an EMP-proof radio if you're going to let a lightning strike knock it out? It doesn't make, make much sense. All right, that's pretty much it. We're going to do a number two video here uh, just for... Uh, for any questions that may come in on uh, on this video but uh, hope you enjoyed it I try to get a little uh, little perspective on this thing it looks like it's kind of uh, neat easy to set up easy to operate and certainly you can walk by the the control room look in look for all the cute little green stuff here and you can see the voice now with the carrier uh, open and closed and you can check, you know, say, oh, you know, I'm doing good here, I'm doing good here. And then you can go get your coffee and uh, have a nice cannoli. So, all right, that's it. My name's Bob, In1KPR. Uh, you can find me on uh, YouTube, In1KPR is my channel. And my website, bobsamerica.com, www.bobsamerica.com. See you later, bye.